Let me see if the slides are coming up. They are. And actually what you see here is a super relevant start for all of us, for a top of mind of CEOs of hospitals right now is not patient safety. It should, but it isn't. What's top of mind? It's cost pressure and not enough stuff. We need to do more with less. In a classic education, that would mean we have a dilemma. And the dilemma that was the foundation for a tragedy. Now, Francisco just gave us a positive outlook and hope. I do not want to lead you down a path of desperation and into tragedy. I want to talk about how innovation helps us out of this dilemma and actually in industry. Years ago already Toyota said with lean management, if you focus on cost, and that's what we do too often, quality will go down. If you focus on quality and quality for us, for you, for me, for everybody, that's patient safety, that's outcomes, cost will go down. And I gave you recent actual data on top to all that you've seen. OIG shared with us that 25% of patients are having adverse events. And that's 2023 New England Journal of Medicine, the first one. Actually, in community hospitals, 40% of patients even suffer from adverse drug events. 2021, adverse surgical events end up at $13 billion. If we look at the, the Advanced Journal of Nursing, 2021 as well, look at the cost and the effect it has if we don't take care of ulcer or of uh, the uh, falls. And last, not least, healthcare-associated infections. We spoke about sepsis already. We're talking tens of billions. Now, I couldn't have asked for better speakers ahead of me. First, they inspired me, and I was humbled and really nervous to be here. But they also gave a great foundation going forward. For yesterday, Klaus Reinhardt spoke about sepsis. And he brought to us the inspiring example of Australia, New Zealand, whereby introducing Victoria early warning scoring for just $1.2 million, if I recall correctly, Aussie dollars, a return of invest of six times was brought by early detection and intervention in septic patients. And this morning, Susan McGrath gave us the example how they actually, in Dartmouth, have brought down as well costs of non-quality by focusing on failure to rescue. And there are solutions out. We know them. They have already proven the same effect, but they didn't make it into mainstream. And I think that's an issue. And we need to ask ourselves, why is not everybody jumping and saying, hey, I want to have this? Yeah. That's a must. I think possibly the business case wasn't attractive enough. Maybe the problem wasn't big enough. Let's move to a meteor space. Let's step away from the general world. I'm anesthesiologist, intensivist. Let's move into the ICU. That's a place, high costs and many patient safety challenges. You know of them, alarm fatigue kidney injury, you have delirium, ventilator associated phenomena, but even if you come out after a prolonged stay on an ICU, there is a fair chance to end up with a post-intensive care syndrome that has a long, long, long-term impact, again, on the patient, but even more on the family members. I want to deep dive with you into these poor health outcomes and the increased costs, and I want to look with you at acute kidney injury. It's honestly not so difficult. Acute kidney injury in critical care doesn't happen because there is bad air or something extraordinary is happening there. It's honestly physiology in action. If we're in a 
state that is life-threatening and critical. We all even know it if we have a severe fever. We get cold hand and a warm central body and head. What's happening? Centralization. The body prioritizes vital organs, one over the other. Brain, heart, lung, liver, they are winners. Kidney, poor kid on the block. <laughs> now, I want to state a famous Austrian living in California, and you know him all. For he said, actually, what the kidney is going to say now, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> I'm out of here. Maybe, hopefully, his second citation comes true. I'll be back. <laughs> Let's hope so. For if we truly look at the reactive model that we're seeing here, yes, the monitor alarms, but we don't measure normally hemodynamics. It's being silenced. And reaction comes late, too late that has a health cost impact. AKA is not a commodity. It's a serious organ failure. 20% of hospitalized patients, one out of two of critical care patients suffer from it. Mortality rate goes up. But my God, what's the long-term result if it doesn't go away? If there is chronic kidney disease or end renal disease failure, patients report, one out of four, that their perceived quality of life is equal or worse than death. We don't want to have this. Nobody should have it. And the costs are huge. Five billion minimum Totally conservative calculation, I can share the details. But if we look at the long-term costs, I believe this is a multiple of X that we need to put to those figures. Now, there is hope. There is innovation. What are we going to do with it? For reactive didn't work. Reactive, by the way, almost never works. How do we come to proactive? How do we come to preventative? For firefighting, as much as everybody likes to be the hero, fire prevention is key. Let's jointly prevent AKI. It starts actually with something that might be looked at to be trivial, but it's not. Right measurement of physiological data. In critical care patients, it won't be the Apple Watches. It will be high-tech measurements that work, that measure the vital signs. But if I look around this room, and I, modern technology, I can measure your SpO2 right now, 98, 99, yeah, okay, wow, 97, whatever. I can do the same on an ICU, obviously, but what does it tell us? Nothing, almost nothing, because we miss context. Here, everybody is breathing room oxygen. In an ICU, the patient could, as well, breathe normally, C could get nasal oxygen supplement, could get a non-invasive invasion, could even be on an ECMO. We need to have contextualized, real-time information. And why is real-time key? For obviously, if something is changing drastically, you need to know what's cause and what's effect. Kidney injury, blood pressure, 120 over 80. Are we having norepinephrine running and keeping the patient alive in a drug resuscitation? Or have we just, out of a hypertensive crisis, nifedipine running? And then if the blood pressure drops, what's cause and effect? You need to have that real-time information. It's so key. Then AI comes in. Predictive algorithms. And boy, they are powerful. They can detect early on already 
that there will be a situation coming where the kidney will go on strike. So let's not react, let's prevent it. Now nurses are still busy. My God, just another alarm from that monitor. And we don't want to have alarms. The dream should be that a monitor never sounds an alarm. Silent ICU. But more importantly, the monitor doesn't need to sound an alarm because physiological parameters are stable. We avoid the deterioration. We prevent it. And actually here, automation and therapy optimization comes in. What if the drugs and the measurements would know what's the targeted range of a blood pressure? Donald, we were in the first panel. You brought up the example of auto-weaning. Yes, many things that can be done, and this is not science fiction. I spoke in the panel earlier about bidirectional communication. That is key. Standards like today's systems talking fire, future will be SDC for device communication. That's being worked, silent ICU, and yes, that will also, by the way, as a side effect, kill alarm fatigue and delirium, not just self on AKI. I couldn't have asked for a better speaker even than Michelle Schreiber this morning being in here talking about a key sentence. We need to have a direct link between safety to productivity and finance. I think this is key. If we really make the business case stronger of safety, many things can happen. It will make healthcare more affordable, sustainable, safer. I think people often follow money, and we have not yet made, I think, the business case strong enough. I could have just put one simple sentence here, the one from my first slide, do you still remember? If you focus on quality, your cost will go down. $23,000 per case. Let's focus on quality. Let's make the business case for patient safety. And I'd like us to think about another innovation beyond AI, beyond automation, that is actually key to make this happen. And that innovation has changed all of our lives already. And the industries. I talk about business model innovation. What has Netflix done to Blockbuster? What has happened with taxis and Uber? I think we need to really revamp the way healthcare is being delivered also by teaming up patients, providers, payers, the industry. Let's jointly tackle the challenge and make innovation that saves life a reality to make healthcare also more affordable. And I want to finish with another citation. It won't be an Austrian this time, but we had quite a few presidents coming up somehow. And uh, one of my favorite presidents in the history of the United States, actually, John F. Kennedy, once said, if not us, who? If not now, when? Thank you. <laughs>